am delighted to introduce my next guest. Uh, Dr. John Campbell is a retired nurse teacher, uh, an A&E nurse. Uh, he shot to internet fame with his video analyses of COVID data. Let's have a quick look. Well, you're most welcome to today's talk, Wednesday, the 2nd of November. Now, this is a video I was hoping not to have to make, but the excess deaths are still going up, especially in the United Kingdom where we're going to be looking at today but it's not just the UK it's quite a few other countries as well. Now as you can see John Campbell you don't have flashy videos you don't have flashy graphics <laughs> you're in your back room you literally use an overhead projector and a pencil as per like university lecture days is that part of the charm of your appeal you've had more than half a billion views of your videos in total yeah M morning Bev thanks for having me oh, very, you're much. very lovely to see <laughs> you yeah it's a fairly basic setup I try and keep the technology as minimal as possible so people can focus on the content so it's all about the content you know, there's a real demand there's a real thirst for evidence-based analysis mm. focused on what I would call the, the intelligent lay viewer. That would just mean someone who's not ne necessarily a medical professional themselves, but has got an interest, is able to analyse things, is able to question and wants to know what the evidence is. Don't always get it right, but that's what we try and do. So you started this, am I right in saying January 2020? I actually started just doing YouTube. That. Well, I actually started making videos in the old VHS days that you <laughs> might just about remember. <laughs> I do. You know, big chunky tapes, and then we went on to DVDs, and then we went on to YouTube. And I that actually, was to teach? Yes, that was... Basically, I taught nurses. For, so I'm a nurse. I taught nurses for 27 years. I yeah. became an academic because nursing went into academia uh, in the 1990s. And um, we, we developed a, a, a whole package, really. I did all the anatomy and physiology, which I normally teach, and all the disease process. Processes. All the things that uh, junior uh, nurses and doctors all need to learn. And we built up a, a modest, modest following with that. Right. But then COVID came, obviously. The first COVID video was the 26th of January 2020. OK. And then the views increased quite dramatically after that. So we went from about 20,000 views a day and now... We're on quite a lot now. So you start at 20,000 views a day. Pre-COVID, it was about 20,000 views a day. Now, I have a theory as to why you became so popular during that period of time, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, you probably do agree with me. We were thirsty yeah. for factual, data-driven information. It felt like there was so much obfuscation. We didn't know who to trust. And there are you, John, in your back bedroom with your overhead projector, <laughs> literally yeah. looking at A4 pieces of paper yeah. and explaining to us what mm. they meant. That was yeah. it, wasn't it? There was an official narrative and basically there was no no, no, no disagreement no about that official at all. Na narrative yeah. and we got what the BBC told us and we were supposed to sit there and say thank you very much politicians thank you very much chief medical officer thank you very much BBC we'll now trot and do, trot off and do what you say but there's a lot of basic principles of I mean, I'm not an infectious diseases specialist but there's a lot of infectious diseases principles mm. a lot of basic virology principles a lot of basic medical principles and you can apply these to the situation and when you applied those to the situation, it was clear there was kind of gaps in, yeah. in what was being said. Uh, initially, there was a lot of trust. And if I, I regret one thing, uh, it was taking the, those supposed to be an authority, the, the, the authorising bodies, the, the marketing bodies, the, the, the senior people, taking those somewhat at face value, whereas now... I analyse or try to analyse everything they say in context of underpinning physiology and underpinning principles and in terms of the data, the evidence. Because right at the beginning, I found you because somebody must have sent me a video. Was, was there one particular one that went very vi viral early on? I think it might have been infection fatality rates. Could, could you were be. good on infection. And I remember thinking, because at the beginning you were very pro-mask, you were very pro-hand sanitizer. Like you say, you, you trusted, right? You trust the system, you trust the medical companies, you trust the chief medical officers. And then you went on this amazing journey, John, and watching you look at this and say, hang on, this isn't right. That, that, that this, isn't, this doesn't adhere to our usual scientific principles mm. a lot of the time, wasn't it? I think we have to go with where the data is. So initially the data was in favour of those things. And we've got to bear in mind we were in a different situation in 2020, 2021. We had the original Wuhan strain, we had the Alpha strain, we had the Delta strain, and they are dangerous strains. Yeah. People do die. COVID is a real disease. The virus exists, it infects people, and it can cause severe illness and death in some people. But now the evidence has changed. We know more. Omicron 
really, I think Omicron is, is the best blessing we've ever had. You know, I interview doctors in Africa and we've got some contacts yes. there. And one of the African doctors said to me, John, you've got to realise Omicron is the vaccine that we failed to produce. Now, he was talking about the African situation. Yeah. But that's so important, this build-up of natural immunity. We've got this amazing immune system. And we're in a milieu of viruses and bacteria now, but thankfully, you're looking fairly mm. healthy. I'm feeling OK at the moment. I'm a bit you, hungover. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not really. No, no I, I, know you were <laughs> last, I know you were at a conference last night. But we, we, we live with this all the time. And, and really, COVID is now in a very endemic phase. Mm. And we have to look, even Boris Johnson said we have to live with it. Yeah. And, and I agree with him on that particular point. You've come up against the censors. Yeah. And, and actually watching you talk about the first time, I think it was when you did a video on ivermectin and you'd looked at a lot of the ivermectin data and ivermectin being a treatment that was arguably actively suppressed and early at home treatment that was mm. having great effects in, like you say, African countries, mm. particularly in some American doctors. Yeah. And I remember watching your ivermectin video go out and I remember thinking, let's just see what happens here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you came on, you said, I'm not, you're never going to believe it. I literally looked at the data and, and you got a warning. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. The, the, the very first ivermectin video I did was with the great American physician, Dr. Pierre Corey. Yeah. Now, he testified before Senate on yeah. steroids, and the video I did on that is still up. And, of course, we know steroids save thousands, probably a million lives in, in the pandemic. And then he, he testified before Senate, sa same, same hearing, same setup on ivermectin. His YouTube video on that hearing got to 10 million views before it was banned. My video with him was put on about half a million views and then it was banned. So that was the first video I had down with one of the leading physicians in the United States and who wasn't allowed to express a medical opinion. And neither were you. That no. was the irony. It was not opinion. You were literally looking no. at numbers and survival no. rates when you treat people at home. That, that's right. So basically, I still don't know how efficacious ivermectin is. I've got some data mm. from uh, Africa that I can't talk about publicly, at least on Mm. on social media that seems to show it improves oxygen concentrations. I've got other evidence from studies, for example, McMaster's University in Canada that seems to show it's a waste of time. But because we've got this kind of publication bias at the moment, so certain things are published and they get into the public domain and the public popular press can report on those and you can put them on social media. But other evidence, for example, my contacts in South Africa, they produce evidence, but they can't get it published. Yeah. So we have this publication bias. It's all to do with this narrative. There's a narrative which is acceptable and there's a narrative which is not acceptable. Now, I want to be able to take arguments for and against. Absolutely. I want to be able to analyse that and I want to come to my own conclusions, thank you very much. And I want my... Peer, I want peer reviews mm. and I want the best scientists and the best doctors we have. And we have some brilliant scientists and doctors in this country. Mm. We were talking to a, a Seymour Hotra last night, yeah. brilliant cardiologist. I want to know his view. Yeah. I want to know what he thinks. And I want to know what he thinks based on the evidence, not based on a narrative. And yet within this allowed. and yet within this kind of this this psychosis that, that we were all encouraged to mm. undergo, um, all of that open and honest debates disappeared. Has that been one of the big lessons for you from the last couple of years? For me, it definitely is. That, that's one of them, that we're basically not allowed counter-argument to the narrative. That's one of the big ones. And the other big thing that I really feel, and it's, it's a major problem, it's a national and international problem, it's the breach of trust. Yeah. Who do we trust? I used to trust. When the pandemic first started, we had a prime minister, we had a chief medical officer and the chief scientific officer. And my wife said, well, that's what you want, isn't it? The prime minister and the chief scientific officer and the chief medical officer. And basically now I feel let down. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I've been let down by them. I feel I've been let down by the regulatory authorities. They've got knighthoods now, which is all very nice for them. But where are they now? Why aren't they talking about what's going on now? They seem to have dropped out of the public domain Altogether. And I think it was also the echo chamber around number 10 mm. that you, we, we had doctors yeah. like the, in the Great Barrington Declaration. Yeah. We had other doctors trying to break through to communicate with those mm. in power mm. to say there may be two sides to this mm. story. Why do you think they couldn't penetrate that sort of cabal of knowledge and information? Yeah, there was cer certainly... There was certainly an accepted narrative, wasn't there? And anything outside of that narrative really didn't get through. Now, why that is, we really don't know. I think the point you make there about an echo chamber is a good one. Mm. Um, people said this and it's self-reinforcing and maybe it's the type of government that was around at the time. I'm no insight mm. into that. But when you get onto more, 
I wouldn't say conspiratorial, but more, more covert, more, more occult possible reasons, there is vested interest. There yeah. is massive financial vested interest. And someone like me is unable to know whether that's a big factor or not. Millions of people believe it's a factor, mm. but we don't actually know and we can't debate it openly. Mm. So we know that various groupings have made billions of pounds. <laughs> Yeah. But other groupings have made millions. We know that individuals have made tens of thousands. We know the way that contracts awarded were questionable. There's a lot of money involved. And, and more you... questions than answers still. I think so. And just one question, John. Mm. How famous are you now? Because you, you're that fascinating famous that there are some people <laughs> who would just fall over when you walk in the room and there's lots um, of people who have no idea who you are. I, I don't think I'm very famous, Pepper. You're make, quite famous, just aren't you? Just make YouTube though? videos. I, I met your wife last night and yeah. she did say, well, it's a bit, it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? She said, I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't really expect any of this yeah, to happen. But it, um, it, It'll all fade fairly soon. Oh, I'm sure it won't. Um, keep up the amazing work because you talk about trust well you are one of the very few incredibly well respected impartial and trusted experts when it comes to what we're still facing uh, dr john campbell there you can find him on youtube appreciate that